Special focus on the impact of COVID-19 on society and want to look at the, the flip side of the pandemic and what technologies are flooding the market in the fight against the coronavirus. You will recall that after the outbreak of the virus, South Africa had to stop using some of the high contact access and security systems such as the biometric finger scanners. Now, Kolani Zuma is the CEO of Advano Tech, uh, an electronic security systems company offering solutions to help curb the spread of COVID-19. He joins us now via Skype. Kolani, a very good morning to you. Hi, good morning, Ben. How are you? And um, good morning to your viewers. It is great to have you on the program looking at this aspect on how COVID-19 has impacted the technology space. How is your company, uh, Kolani, helping in terms of the fight against COVID-19? Look, uh, I think it's important for us all, to all acknowledge that we've been hit by you know, um, what everybody has termed the new normal. Um, you know, what we knew um, is never going to be the same. Um, and that applies in the technology space as well. Mm. Um, what we are doing currently as, as, as Advanotech is to drive the education of our customers about the um, the move from, as you earlier alluded, the move from your, um, you know, your generic biometric technologies, which is more touch-based technologies, to touchless technologies. Mm -hmm. So we we are advocating the the, the migration from um, touch to touchless. We're educating our customers, but um, importantly, importantly, we are also giving our customers comfort that the technology that has now been, you know, expedited on us is in actual yeah. fact practical. And, you know, I, I've experienced this, this touchless uh, technology. I, I went to a mall recently, and when you drive into the parking lot, you normally touch uh, to get your, your parking ticket, but now you just have to wave, and then the ticket comes out. It helps with regards to containing the spread of COVID-19 in, in many ways. Tell us a bit more about some of the technologies being deployed around the country. So, so we've seen a surge in you know, the facial recognition and um, temperature screening devices, um, you know, and obviously um, this from a, from a use case scenario, you know, it will be applicable for corporate environment, um, will be applicable for, for retail um, and, 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 um, and so forth. But the important um, um, thing right now is that as, Ad, as Advanotech, not only are we advocating the use of these touchless environments, we're also looking at how can we integrate already existing and global technology, customize it to be um, user-friendly in the South African and African context. For instance, um, when you look at the public sector, we have driven the introduction or at least use thereof of queue management system to ensure that um, the movement of people in high you know, um, traffic environments yeah. is flawless. Yeah. We are driving, you know, occupancy monitoring um, in in corporate spaces, um, all all to ensure that we're able to um, align our technology with the government pr prerogative or government legislative, um, you know, direction on um, social distancing. Yeah. Um, we are also rolling out and um, pushing on the ground the use of um, track track and trace platforms platforms um, to make sure that in an environment where there has been a case, we are able to then um, help government um, and the entire health um, sector tra do tracking and tracing of, um, you know, um, um, people that have reported abnormal temperatures, for instance. Yeah. I mean, it, it, you know, you're talking about this, this facial recognition technology. It seems like a lot of these technologies were on the periphery, just sitting, waiting on the sidelines for something massive like this to, to come and, and push it to the fore. Yeah. Yeah. Look, um, it's, it's quite interesting because the reality of it is that all of these technologies have existed. Mm. But um, like I said, um, they've existed in, in one way or the other in silos. Yeah. So we all know that there is temperature um, screening devices, you know, but the use case now is um, 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 it's different. 
um, you, you, you were flighting in the background there, um, one of our um, newest technology in Advanotech. It's, um, it's a, a, what we call a centric health um, kiosk. So what we've done there is We've taken all of these um, technologies that have been sitting on the periphery and we've created one consolidated device that does not need a security guard or an employee to man. It actually con integrates temperature screening, it integrates facial recognition, and only after it has verified your temperature, it has taken your health pre-screening um, um, information and dispensed um, a sanitizer will it allow you access into an environment, right. which is perfect for corporate banks, you know, casinos as they open and um, the rest of the retail right. um, um, platforms. Right. You know, when you introduce technology, the fear is that you're going to lose warm bodied people manning such yep. things you know and people are worried about that especially in south africa where you have unemployment rates sitting at over 30 30 percent uh talk to us about this technology is all obviously it's important to reskill people and that's a process that needs to happen but this technology is it being developed in south africa or are we importing it so the the bulk of it is imported yeah but the, the interesting thing about South Africa and Africa as a whole is that we've always had, you know, different challenges as um, a continent to our Western partners. So there's always been a need for us to, as we import technology, to then do customization of some sort locally to ensure that that which we import is user-friendly, you know, fit for purpose, in the African environment with its different challenges. There is the opportunity for me. The opportunity lies in our ability to, to, to bring in technology and set up the necessary you know, infrastructures with people um, who are upskilled to now be able to customize and most importantly, be the champions, yeah. if not ambassadors, yeah. of how this technology can be applied. Remember, uh, Blaine, there's always been this, you know, misconception that technology is high LSM, corporate type of play, but the COVID-19 has taught all of us that technology in actual fact permeates all the way through from an office mm. where we work to a home. Yeah. Now, it is yeah. that, for me, is where the opportunity is. How do we integrate technology in an environment where a plumber, for instance, would come and service my house? Mm. How, how do we integrate technology in an environment where an aircon's uh, maintenance contractor would come into your office and service your aircon? So what we're doing as Advanotech, for instance, to help that plight from an integration and upskilling perspective, we have a platform which allows for us to do what we call photorealistic scanning mm. of your office, your home, so that a plumber, a maintenance, um, um, H HVAC maintenance guy has access to your environment 3D remotely without them having to come into your space on a daily basis. Right. Now, that kind of technology presents opportunities for us to train our people, yeah. not only in, yeah. the, in how they migrate their environment to be technology inclined, but how to use these high-end technologies as an enabler to deliver on their day-to-day -day services. Speaking about day-to-day -day services, and obviously this technology talks to the economic development of South Africa. What about uh, our, our children, our learners? Going back to school as of tomorrow, more grades are being, uh, you know, will be going, the next cohort of learners will be going back to school. What about that space, the education space and technology? We are now, more than ever, one would say, are relying on technology to get us through. Uh, talk to us about what sort of developments are there in the education space? You know, um, 
plain it saddens me and then and, and and maybe this is an opportunity for us to be to be open about how the application of the technology is driven um you know from a, a policy position perspective so um i've i've traveled wide in the country um you know like i said earlier as a nanotech we've taken a position that we're not only just going to sell technology to our customers but we're also going to educate them. I found myself in um, KwaZulu Natal in Durban, um, in particular, for instance, in a schooling environment um, where the earlier grades have already started coming into school. And you see that, yes, there is technology introduction into that environment. But as it being introduced, there is still gaps in how this um, technology is being rolled out in, in the schooling environment. And I think there is a call on all of us as technology players to start looking at this schooling environment and saying how can we help facilitate not only the introduction but the entrenchment of technology use in that environment you know um yes there's going to be um temperature scanners and i mean i was lucky to visit Okwini high school in umlazi p section um, um, Blaine, I actually matriculated in that school, right. and I was surprised to find that they have temperature scanners in the environment, but I then got disappointed to see that as they engage, the pre-screening, health screening um, documents is still done on a physical platform where there's exchange of paper and pen, mm. and I'm saying in the days of COVID-19, as technology owners, we need to come in now and say, hold on, we can automate that for you. Yeah. Mr. Zuma, the future is now. And we thank you very much indeed for coming on and giving us some insight and perspective in terms of the way where we're going in this country in terms of technology. Uh, Kolani Zuma, thank you very much indeed. Be well. Thank you, Blaine. Thank you so much. Thank you for having Advanotech on, on your program. All right. Uh, Colin Izuma, the CEO of Advanotech, an electronic systems company now playing in the COVID-19 space as South Africa battles COVID-19. Well, they make sure we can travel many happy kilometers, but never did this petrol attendant believe that he will find himself on the front line of the coronavirus pandemic. Watch. Kinamo Jackie Gladwin was saying I'm from Paula Mafiking. I support two children and my partner with the money that I earn here in Sasol. So after the start of uh, this COVID-19 pandemic, uh, we, we didn't actually take it seriously because we thought that this is for, for the Westerns. It is for people who are rich and are traveling. Hence people, I thought they, didn't, they were not given enough information. But as reality strikes, when mm, our, our staff members were, were, were reduced, our working hours were reduced, we, we realized that it has impacted uh, uh, hugely on, our, on, on the economy. Hence, we had to, 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 to work less hours and we are going to get less money. And even an essential service like theirs are feeling the pinch. Um, the impact that I have here, th that it have on the business, it's huge. We've lost a lot of liters. Um, we've lost a lot of income. The sales have dropped uh, tremendously. Um, my staff, some of them, they don't really understand uh, why they, their hours had to be cut. Uh, for us as management, we're trying our best to keep uh, as least staff possible on site um, just to, to keep them out of reach of the, of the virus. And there will always be fears that they can get sick. A lot of traffic comes here. So every single day, hence I'm waking up in the morning, I know I have to prepare myself. This might be the day that I get COVID-19. So that I even speak um, constantly with the colleagues and the employees here. I told them, just be strong because we don't know. It can be tomorrow, it can be today, it can be in the next hour. Uh, what I fear the most is the ignorance of our society. So uh, they, they believe that this pandemic it, 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 it's not it's not for, the, for 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 blacks, but we see the number growing and we are going to die. There is no second chance. The economy can have second chance. The schools can have second chance. Everything can have second chance, but you cannot have a second chance after you have died. 
Lizette Labaskagni, SABC News. Mai King. All right, I want to take you back now to the Eastern